In the last few lectures, we had discussed uh, momentum transfer in different configurations in the flow through conduits, the flow through a pipe, uh, the flow uh, past a flat plate, flow around particles through packed columns and also in mixing applications. Okay. Uh, in all of these cases, uh, the dimensionless groups, the friction factor, the drag coefficient and the skin friction coefficient were related to the Reynolds number and other dimensionless groups okay, by various correlations in two distinct regimes. One was a laminar flow where the flow is in nice uh, smooth straight streamlines with very little with no fluid fluctuations perpendicular to the cross section and there is a transition as the Reynolds number increases to a turbulent flow. In this, uh, 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 now we will start looking at correlations for heat and mass transfer. Okay. Uh, first of all, I should uh, state that correlations are returned for dimensionless fluxes. Okay. Rather than talking about the transport rates, which is the amount transferred per unit time, the heat transferred per unit time or the mass transferred per unit time. These correlations are written for the average fluxes amount transported per unit area per unit time. Okay. So, once you have these fluxes, you can then multiply that by the surface area and uh, get the actual transport rates that is the surface area of transport. So, for example, in a pipe flow, the surface area of transport would be the cylindrical surface area of the pipe. For the flow past a particle, the surface area of transport would be the surface of that surface area of that particle. Okay. So, you take the total transport rate divided by that surface area and then correlations are written for these quantities. Uh, the, the dependent dimensionless groups are dimensionless fluxes. Okay. which are basically the Nusselt number is equal to k uh, sorry q average by k delta t by L c. L c is a characteristic length k is the thermal conductivity, delta t is the characteristic temperature difference. Temperature difference across the uh, between the bulk and the wall of a pipe for heat transfer for example or the temperature difference between the particle and the ambient fluid for mass transfer for example. Okay. So, that is the Nusselt number. Q average is the uh, heat transported per unit area of the surface of transport per unit time. It is scaled by a quantity which has the same dimension as the right side of Fourier's law of heat conduction, okay, k delta t by the characteristic length. Characteristic length is the diameter of the equivalent diameter, okay, diameter of the pipe or the particle or its equivalent diameter for irregular shapes. Okay. And for mass transfer, this is the Sherwood number which is the average mass flux divided by the diffusion coefficient the change difference in concentration between the surface and the bulk divided by a characteristic length. Okay. So, this is, those are the dependent dimensionless groups, the dimensionless fluxes. Okay. The independent are the Reynolds numbers. Okay. where rho and mu are the viscosity, the density and viscosity, V c is the characteristic length and L c is the characteristic, I am um, sorry, V c is the characteristic velocity and L c is the characteristic length. Characteristic velocity you recall for the flow in conduits is the average velocity, flow rate divided by the cross sectional area. For the flow outside particles, it is the um, uh, 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 particle diameter okay, 
uh, or the equivalent diameter of the particle. Okay. And then there is the Peclet number okay, which is equal to the ratio V C L C by D for mass transfer and V C L C by alpha for heat transfer. Okay. Where alpha is the thermal diffusivity, alpha is equal to K by rho C T. Okay. So those are these are the independent and the dependent dimensionless groups. Okay. Now an important idea that is used in heat and mass transfer is the equivalence of heat and mass transfer. Okay. That is if I take a correlation for the Nusselt number, okay. if I take a correlation for the Nusselt number for heat transfer which will depend upon is equal to some function of Reynolds number and the Peclet number for heat transfer. Okay. If we have a correlation of this form, Nusselt number is some function of the Reynolds number and the Peclet number for heat transfer. I can get the equivalent correlation for mass transfer by just substituting the mass transfer quantities of the dependent and the independent dimensionless groups. Okay. That is I will just substitute instead of the dimensionless flux for heat transfer, I substitute the dimensionless flux for mass transfer. This is equal to some function of the Reynolds number and the Peclet number for mass transfer. Okay. So just by substituting the heat transfer quantities with the mass transfer quantities, I will get the exact same correlation for mass transfer. Uh, this is a powerful idea because what it says is that if you want to know what is a heat transfer co uh, correlation, you do not even need to do a heat transfer experiment. You can do a heat mass transfer experiment if that is easier for you to do. Get the correlation, just substitute the Nusselt number for Sherwood number and the heat transfer Peclet number for the mass transfer Peclet number and you will get the correlation for the heat transfer for the same problem. Okay. So that is what is called the equivalence of heat and mass transfer. Okay. Okay, that is you have a correlation for mass transfer, you can get the equivalent correlation for heat transfer in the same system. Okay. Uh, now this is a powerful idea but at its, uh, uh, it is fundamentally because in the microscopic equations, okay, in the microscopic equations defined at each point within the flow, the heat and mass transfer correlations are exactly the same. Okay. So we know that uh, the, 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 the equation, the uh, Fourier's law okay, for heat conduction locally Q is equal to minus K delta T by delta Z, okay, that is Fourier's law. And the fixed law for diffusion is is equal to minus D delta C by delta Z. Okay. So if I substitute the uh, mass diffusivity with the thermal conductivity, concentration with temperature and mass flux with heat flux, I get exactly the same relation. Okay. So because of that, the two transport mechanisms at the microscopic scale are exactly the same except that you have to substitute the mass transfer quantities with the heat transfer quantities. And the net transport rate at the macroscopic scale is just obtained by integrating these microscopic quantities over the entire volume. So therefore, the net transfer, transport rate expressed for the macroscopic quantities when expressed in scaled form will be exactly the same whether it is for heat and mass transfer. Okay. So that is the fundamental uh, 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 reason for this analogy between heat and mass transfer. Okay. So you can take a heat transfer correlation and use it for mass transfer by just changing the dimensionless groups from the, the groups that are relevant for heat transfer to the groups that are relevant for mass transfer. 
this of course will apply okay so this assumes okay so a Nusselt number is a function of Reynolds number and Peclet number for for heat Sherwood number is a function of Reynolds number and Peclet number for mass okay this applies that the this implies that the uh, if if this analogy is to hold it implies that the number one the velocity field is the same okay for both heat and mass transfer so that convective effects are the same okay it does not apply at at uh, low Peclet number of course there uh, convection is not important it is only diffusion but in general this implies that the velocity field is the same both in the presence of heat transfer and mass transfer at the same Reynolds number okay. That in turn implies that variations in temperature and concentration do not affect the velocity field okay. So that is one basic assumption here that variations in temperature and concentration do not affect the velocity field when you say that there is an equivalence between the heat and mass transfer correlations and that is generally true okay if, unless you have very large changes in temperature and so on. There is no variation in temperature in, in the velocity field due to uh, uh, because of uh, variations in concentration and temperature. The other assumption is that these fixed law and Fourier's law actually hold okay because when we calculate fixed law and Fourier's law for example and put it into the correlations we are effectively assuming that the diffusivities are independent of position okay, independent of location okay these are constants and it is because they are constants that we can use them in these equations okay. So it assumes that the thermal conductivity and the diffusivity are independent of for example temperature or concentration and so on so that you can assume these to be a constants in the over the entire domain even though the temperature or the concentration may be changing. So these are the two assumptions that are made when you make this equivalence between heat and mass transfer you have constant uh, uh, diffusivities and the velocity field is not changed due to variations in concentration or temperature. If these conditions hold and if you have a correlation for heat transfer you can get an equivalent correlation for mass transfer or rather if you know what is the Sherwood number at a specific Reynolds and Peclet number you can find out you can determine what is the Nusselt number at that same Reynolds number and heat transfer Peclet number okay. so that is the equivalence. There is a stronger analogy that is often used and that is called the it is called the Chilton Colburn analogy. And what this analogy states is that they define uh, a, a J factor J is equal to Nusselt number okay so if I take J for heat transfer by R e times uh, Prattle number power one third okay and J for mass transfer is equal to the Sherwood number divided by R e times the Schmidt number power one third okay. Recall that the Prattle number is equal to uh, C p mu by k which is the ratio of the momentum and the thermal diffusivities and the Schmidt number is uh, mu by rho d which is equal to the ratio of the momentum and the mass diffusivities okay. The Chilton Colburn analogy is that both of these okay J heat is equal to J mass is equal to some function of the Reynolds number alone okay. This J heat and J mass first of all they are the same okay that is the first statement. The second statement is that they do not depend upon heat or mass transfer quantities they depend only upon the Reynolds number that is they depend only on the flow characteristics okay. So all of the Prantl and the Schmidt number dependence is explicitly included in the uh, J factors. Written in this way 
you recall that our Nusselt number correlations were Nusselt number was function of Reynolds number and Peclet number or Reynolds number and Prandtl number. This Chilton Coleman analogy says that if you take the Nusselt number and divide it by Prandtl number power one third, the result is only a function of Reynolds number. Okay, it no longer depends upon the the Prandtl or the Peclet numbers. Okay. And this is an empirical observation. Okay, this is an empirical observation. Basically, it states that in all Nusselt number or Sherwood number correlations, the Prandtl number or the Schmidt number appears only to the one third power. Okay. It appears only to the one third power. As we will see a little later, this is true for flow around particles at high Peclet number okay, when convection is dominant. Okay. Uh, it is obviously not valid at low Peclet numbers where diffusion is dominant because we saw earlier that at low Peclet numbers the Sherwood number or the Nusselt number has to be a constant. So, this is valid for generally for Peclet number large compared to 1 okay, where inertial effects are large compared to viscous effects and only for solid particles or rather let me state this as no slip condition. It is widely used, but in general it cannot be used around gas bubbles for example, where the velocity is non-zero at the interface. Uh, there is an even stronger analogy which is called the Reynolds analogy okay. and the Reynolds analogy is, is uh, states that J mass is equal to J mass is equal to J heat is equal to the friction factor divided by 2. Okay. This explicitly relates the uh, J factor to the friction factor okay. and this is a much stronger analogy. Okay. Uh, however, it is also much more restricted in its validity. Okay. Uh, it one, one should be very careful to use the Reynolds analogy only in the domain where it is valid because it is not generally valid uh, uh, in, in all cases. Okay. It is valid only for gases okay, with Prandtl number of order 1 okay, and Schmidt number of order 1. Okay. As we will see later when we do uh, diffusion, uh, the Prandtl and the Schmidt numbers are both comparable to 1 in the case of gases. The mass, heat and momentum diffusivities are roughly equal and for the flow past slender bodies. Okay, such as the flow in a past a flat plate, okay, flow past a flat plate where the dominant force on the surface is due to the viscous force acting tangential to the surface. Okay. So, for gases and for flow past slender bodies you can use this Reynolds analogy otherwise it is not generally valid. Okay. The Chilton Colburn analogy is valid for over a larger range it is valid generally at high Peclet numbers because the both the Nusselt and the Sherwood numbers both are proportional to the Prandtl or Schmidt number to the one third or the Peclet number to the one third. Okay, so, it is more generally valid. And the equivalence between the, the, the correlations for mass and heat transfer are more generally valid provided the flow field is not affected by these transport processes and the diffusion coefficients are a constant across the entire domain. Okay. So, that is a far more general analogy between heat and mass transfer. And so, when we go through the remainder of the course, I will usually talk only about one of those correlations, either the Nusselt or the Sherwood number correlation. It is understood that the other one can be obtained by, re, by interchanging the Nusselt and Sherwood number and the Prandtl and Schmidt number okay, or the heat transfer Peclet number and the mass transfer Peclet number. If you do that interchange, you will get the equivalent correlation for uh, 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 the 
uh, mass transfer okay, from the correlation for the heat transfer or vice versa. Okay. So, what are the what do the correlations depend upon? Okay. Of correlations. One is it depends upon the flow regime. That is whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. Okay. We saw that in all the cases we studied, there is a distinct transition between a laminar to a turbulent flow. Okay. That happens in a pipe flow for a specific value of the Reynolds number. Okay. Uh, about 2100 or so, you see a discontinuous change. Okay. In the flow around a particle, for example, you go to a sequence of changes in the nature of the flow around the particle. Okay. Uh, in a flat plate as well, you see a rather abrupt change at a particular value of the Reynolds number based upon the downstream distance. Okay. So, the correlations are going to be very different depending upon whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. Okay. Generally, in a laminar flow, the flow pattern does not change as the Reynolds number changes. Okay. So, for example, as we will see later, in the parabolic flow in a pipe, the flow remains parabolic as the Reynolds number changes. The value of the maximum velocity does increase as the Reynolds number changes, but the flow pattern, the profile remains exactly the same as the Reynolds number changes. Similarly, we had said that we have a laminar flow around a particle when the Reynolds number is less than about 1.5. You have nice smooth streamlines with symmetry about the between the upstream and the downstream sections okay, for the, about the mid plane of the sphere you have symmetry. In that case as well, as long as the Reynolds number is small, if you change the velocity, the free stream velocity, the velocity at each point will change by the same amount. Okay. So, uh, for a laminar flow, okay, if the flow is parabolic, okay, if I change the pressure gradient and it continues to be laminar, I will get still get a parabolic flow. Okay. The maximum velocity will be higher, but the shape of the velocity profile will still be the same. Okay. Similarly, for the flow past a particle, if I have a particular velocity field, If I increase the Reynolds number, the velocity at each point will increase by that same factor. If okay, the velocity at each point increases by the same factor, okay, that is a feature of low Reynolds number flows as also for laminar flows in a pipe for example, okay, unidirectional flows in a pipe. This is a feature okay, for laminar regime you will have um, linearity that is if you change the maximum velocity, the velocity at each point changes. That is not true for a turbulent flow. As you change the Reynolds number for a turbulent flow, the turbulent flow pattern itself changes. Okay. The velocity profile does not remain the same. In the case of a flow past a particle for example, you get different kinds of patterns for example, the separation bubble at the rear, the vortex shedding, uh, the wake region and so on. The characteristics of those change as the uh, 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 Reynolds number changes. Okay. So, this is one of the factors that determines uh, the nature of the correlation. Okay. The second factor that determines the nature of the correlation is the surface condition. And in this case, we can make distinction between two different kinds of surfaces, what are called rigid surfaces and what are called mobile surfaces. Okay. Okay. For example, if you had the flow of a fluid down an inclined plane for example, okay. it is flowing with some velocity. Okay. At this surface, Okay. You have what is called a no slip condition. 
that is the fluid velocity has to decrease to the surface velocity at this point. The fluid velocity has to be the same as the surface velocity. That is true for solid surfaces. You have a no slip condition at that surface. Okay. The fluid velocity has to decrease to the surface velocity at that point. The opposite surface is what you call have what is called a slip condition. Okay. So this happens typically at liquid gas interfaces. Okay. This is liquid solid. liquid gas. Okay. The velocity is non-zero at the interface between the gas and the liquid. Okay. That is what is called a slip condition or a mobile surface. This is what is called a slip condition or a mobile surface okay. this, uh, 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 as distinguished from a solid surface. Similarly, if you have flow past a rigid particle, a solid particle for example, okay. if you have flow past a solid particle at the boundary the fluid velocity relative to the particle has to come to 0 okay, for a solid particle. This is a no slip condition. Okay. On the other hand if you have something like a gas bubble, okay. if you have a gas bubble and a flow past the gas bubble. If you look close to the surface and once again expand it out the velocity of the liquid at this surface is in general non-zero. Okay. That is because at a solid surface, the surface is rigid. So if you require that the solid velocity and the fluid velocity have to be zero, it has to be the same at the surface. If the surface is stationary, then the fluid has to satisfy a no slip condition. On the other hand, at a liquid gas interface, there is gas inside. Okay. So there is gas and this is solid. Okay. At a gas liquid interface there is gas inside and that gas can circulate within the bubble. So you can have a non-zero velocity. Since the viscosity of the gas is much smaller than the viscosity of the liquid, the requirement is that the, uh, 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 the shear stress at the surface has to decrease to zero or the velocity gradient at the surface has to decrease to zero. So that is the requirement at a liquid gas interface. Okay. So this is a slip boundary condition and we shall refer to this as a mobile interface. Similarly, if you have two liquids, the, drop of, uh, the droplet of one liquid in a fluid consisting of the other liquid, then once again the liquid inside can circulate and therefore you can have a non-zero velocity at the surface. Okay. Why does this affect the correlations? because it affects the relative strength of convection to diffusion as you approach the surface. When there is a no slip condition there is zero convection at the surface itself okay. and because of, the, of that the strength of convection has to decrease to zero as the surface is approached if there is a no slip condition at the surface. In contrast when there is a slip condition at the surface the strength of convection does not approach zero, it is finite even as you approach the surface. Okay. And because of this fundamental difference in the strength of convection as you approach a surface, there is a difference in the forms of the correlation as you approach the surface. Okay. So I just outlined for you some general considerations that we will keep in mind when we uh, uh, examine correlations for heat and mass transfer. Okay. The first one is the analogy. Okay. Uh, the forms of the correlations are exactly the same for heat and mass transfer. Uh, you can take a mass transfer correlation, replace the Sherwood number with the Nusselt number, replace the Schmidt number with the Prandtl number and you get the equivalent heat transfer correlation. This does not work for momentum transfer though. Okay. You cannot replace for example the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Reynolds number uh, with the Peclet number and get a mass tra uh, momentum transfer correlation. The difference is that in the case of momentum transfer, the quantity being transferred and the mechanism of transfer that is by convection are exactly the same. Momentum is being transferred 
and it is being transferred by convection due to the velocity field itself. Okay, so the mechanism and the uh, quantity being transferred are the same. Okay, so therefore, the the momentum transfer will 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 necessarily influence the velocity field. Okay, the momentum transfer will necessarily influence the velocity field. In the case of heat and mass transfer, the quantity being transferred, heat or mass, and the mechanism of transfer are different. Okay, and because of that these are what are called as passive scalars if they do not affect the flow. The uh, uh, temperature and concentration if they do not affect the flow they are referred to as passive scalars and they do not affect the velocity field. Okay. So, the mechanism of transfer which is the velocity due to convection is different from the quantity that is being transferred and because of that you have an analogy between these two, but not with momentum transfer. Chilton Colburn analogy uh, it basically reduces further the j factor depends only upon Reynolds number not on the Prandtl number or the Schmidt number. It is limited where you have no slip condition at the surface and uh, also where the Peclet number is high. Okay. When the Peclet number is low then this analogy does not work. Reynolds analogy is still more limited it states that the j factor is equal to f divided by 2 and it works only for gases. Prandtl number order 1, Schmidt number order 1. Okay. So, these are the different kinds of uh, considerations that we will use in looking at heat and mass transfer and the dependence of the correlations on the nature of the flow and the nature of the interface or the surface across which transfer takes place. So, we will continue this lecture in the next uh, this, this discussion in the next lecture uh, where we will discuss low Peclet number and high Peclet number transport and then proceed to discuss specific examples of flow in a pipe, flow around a particle and so on and write down some correlations for these different cases. So, I will continue this in the next lecture, I will see you then.